To say that 25-year-old Ulysses Roca was having a rough few days before his death would be an understatement. On April 5th, he was picked up by police for breaking the curfew. That translated into a fine of $3,000. But then, while in detention, a police officer recorded this video of him, which depicts him as a sort of homeless degenerate. The Honey World and Info Iconic Seals. Check it online if you don't believe me. And this lady yeah. and family are telling me I'm homeless. I work for 915. I graduate from the RHS Miss at 15 years old. You saw that saxo? Skip four classes. You saw that saxo? Mister, this is not a socks, it's a gloves. I'm wearing two socks. In. No, 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 please don't. No. What happened to you? Oh my God. <laughs> You're disturbing. Oh, please, don't. I literally just put two racks for my foot, miss. Most residents would think twice about insulting a police officer while in their custody for fear of a police beatdown. But Roca retaliated defiantly by dissing one of the policemen. Are you designing them? Are you designing them? I didn't design them, it's just a socks. Come on. But just now you told me it's a gloves. Well, you're very dumb. <laughs> that video was leaked and shared on Facebook where many saw it. Roca claimed that as a result, he became a walking punchline. Roca also claims that while he was in police detention, he was assaulted by a police officer who struck him in the face. Shortly after being released from custody, friends and relatives noticed that his left jaw had massive swelling. He decided that he would break his silence and publicly demand that those who found his misery amusing would leave him alone. A part of me is here and I'm thinking like, am I going to go to special branch and am I going to make a report and make this thing bigger than what it is right now? Because here you are and you're videoing me and you're making me look like a fool. Why? Why? You know, I'm going through a lot. I'm going through the biggest transition of my life. I lost my mom. Like, can you let me grieve her? You don't see what I'm doing. You don't see my potential as an artist. Like, no, you're worried that I'm gay. Like, that's it. So I deserve this. And what? You officers are just going to walk free and it's, it's the end of it? Come on! As far as we know, Friday, which was the 3rd of April, he was at my sister's house and she said that he left from there a little after 8, which as we all know the curfew at 8 o'clock. So he left from there and I guess the police picked him up and detained him. He had told my sister that with the beating that he already received at the station in Belize, on top of that, the officer hit him in the face with a machete. According to his family, he started facing medical distress from the injury to his face, which was compounded by his status as an HIV-positive patient. Yesterday, he was found dead inside his late mother's house in Willows Bank. A post-mortem says that he died from organ failure due to complications related to HIV. His loved ones think that his infected jaw is directly connected to his sudden passing. Me personally, I was say I know a diabetic, okay? When I had an infection in my mouth, my whole half of my jaw swelled up. As diabetics and HIV patients, when we get an infection for we body, not heal like a regular person. So in a matter of days, we go, just like that. So if he had an infection, like we know what we say, we know what we to say. And I could tell you from experience, I feel like that at. Even after his distress, some of which was allegedly at the hands of police, Roca was still optimistic. His sudden passing has caught his loved ones off guard. Despite what you think of me, what you may say about me, you know, being HIV positive is not the end of the world. For me, it's a big transition in my life having to take a medication every day, but I do it. I try to protect myself. I try to stay safe. Like I have so much that my, my cup is up here 
and you keep adding acid and fire and anger and animosity in my life like it's not fair to me but you'll never see me break down to the point where I'll hurt myself you will not get that from me I don't want any problems with anyone okay I don't want any problems with anyone I'm asking to remove that video because it's not funny the video that they put out was just horrible because nobody deserves to be treated like that nobody deserves to be taunted and beaten and treated like an animal the neighbors who were close to him explain where he lived he was stigmatized for being feminine where he lived his parents were not exactly mentally there. Where he lived, because of his dark skin, that did not help. And where he lived, he, he, he was poor. So it's an intersectional issue of ethnicity, of economic standing, of sexuality, of mental health. And when you have so much thing against you, Something has to go wrong badly. He died from a lack of empathy. Reporting for 7 News, Daniel Ortiz.